Falling objects include those objects released from rest, thrown downward with an initial downward velocity, and also those thrown up into the air. It may seem weird, but the moment this ball leaves my hand, it begins to fall. Because it has an upward initial velocity, it takes time for it to turn around and begin to travel downward. Let's try a problem like this. A rock is thrown straight up at a speed of 15 meters per second. So the rock goes up before coming back down. How high above its starting position can the rock go? How long does the rock stay in the air before it's caught at its initial position? And what is the rock's velocity just before it's caught? For part A, we're only going to the maximum height, only the first part of the motion. Let's list the variables. The initial velocity is 15 meters per second. Since the initial velocity is upward, so this is a positive velocity. We're looking for the maximum height, so we're looking for delta y. Again, we need to know three things for a constant acceleration problem. What are the two other things we know? We know that the acceleration is the gravitational acceleration, so A is 9.8 meters per second squared. But I'm just going to round it to 10. It is a, a negative acceleration because it is a downward acceleration. We also know that at the maximum height, the velocity is zero because it is a turning point. Velocity is always zero at the turning point. To turn around, the object has to first slow down to a momentary stop before starting to move in the opposite direction. So we know these three things and we're looking for the delta y. There's no time involved. So the v squared equation is convenient to use. That is final velocity squared equals to initial velocity squared plus 2a times the displacement. The final velocity is 0. The initial is 15 plus 2 times a times the delta y. So this is 0 equals to 225 minus 20 delta y. 225 equals to 20 delta y. If I move this one over, so delta y is 225 divided by 20, which gives you 11.25 meters. So the maximum height it reaches is 11.25 meters. Now before we find the time, Let's first plot a velocity versus time graph. The velocity starts at positive 15. That's 0. And then the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. So the slope should be a constant negative 10. Right here, the velocity becomes zero, and that's the turning point. So that's the turning point, that's the maximum height. Now, the area for the velocity versus time graph is the displacement. So the displacement is this area. When velocity is positive, the object is going upward, so it, you get a positive displacement. The area here is the maximum height, 11.25 meters, because from the beginning to the maximum height, the turning point, the displacement is positive 11.25. Now, if it gets caught at the same initial, so same position as the initial position, that means that when it comes down, it will have a downward displacement that is 11.25 meters, which means that when it comes back down, this area here 
would have to be exactly the same as that. It's just it's going to be a negative displacement. If these two triangles have the same area, because they are similar triangles, that means they must be congruent. That means uh, however much time it takes to go to the maximum height, it would take exactly the same amount of time to come back down to the starting position. Which means that if I want to find the time in air, I can just find the time to the maximum height and then double it. So let's see. Let's find the time to maximum height. For this part, this is only to the maximum height. So we already know three things plus this one we just found. We know four things and we're looking for the time. If you look at the equation, any equation that involves time can be used. So you can use any of these three equations. But this one is probably the easiest. So that's the one I'm going to use. So that's the final velocity equals to the initial velocity plus at. The final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is a positive 15 plus negative a, neg negative 10 times t. So the t would be 1.5 seconds. That's the time it takes to the maximum height. That means uh, it also takes 1.5 seconds to come back down. So the total time in air would be 1.5 seconds times 2, 3 seconds. The object would be in the air for 3 seconds. Another thing is uh, that the acceleration is negative 10 and the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time, which means the acceleration is the rate at which the velocity changes. The velocity changes by negative 10 meters per second every second. The object starts at 15 meters per second, and its velocity has to change by negative 10 every second, which means that one second later, its velocity will be 15 plus negative 10, which is 5. And then half a second later, the, uh, the velocity will change by negative 5, which means the velocity will become 0. So one and a half seconds later, the velocity becomes 0. That's the turning point. You can actually just divide the velocity by 10, and then you get the time to the maximum height. And that's exactly what we did over here. When you divide 15 by 10, you get to the 1.5. This is one way to find the answer for part B. Another way to find the time in air for part B is to just start from here and end at the very end. So let's list the variables. The initial velocity is still the same, positive 15. The acceleration, same, negative 10. But your final velocity is no longer zero because it's not a turning point and right before it lands its velocity is not zero. You're looking for the time. What's the third thing we know? The third thing we know is uh, the delta y is zero because the initial position and the final position, they are the same. So changing position is zero. Now we know those three things and looking for time, no final velocity involved. So this equation can be convenient. Delta y is vot plus one half at squared. So the delta y is zero and the vot will be 15t plus one half a t squared. Oops, that's negative 10. And this gives you 15 t minus 5 t squared. I can factor out the t and I get 15 minus 5 t equals to 0. And you solve this, you'll get t is either 0 or 3 seconds. 
and it makes sense for you to have two answers because the displacement is zero at the beginning when the t is zero. The displacement is zero again right there. That's the time, three seconds, which is the same as what you found there. So you can either go to the maximum height, multiply the time by two, and get the total time, or just go all the way and find the time. The reason why you can multiply by two is because these two sides, the upward trip and the downward trip, they happen to be symmetric. If it takes 1.5 seconds up, it will take 1.5 seconds down. Now let's see part C. You want the final velocity right before it's caught. Since these two are the congruent triangles, that means if that's positive 15, this must be negative 15. So the moment before it lands, or the moment before it's caught, is negative 15 meters per second. That's the velocity. It's 15 meters per second, same speed, but downward. There's one more thing I would like to point out. Although the object's path bends, you do not have to treat this problem like a two-part problem. Because it's the same kind of motion throughout, it's constant acceleration motion, the same acceleration, negative 9.8 or negative 10, on its way up and on its way down. On its way up, the velocity is uh, upward and positive. The acceleration is downward and negative. Velocity and acceleration are in the opposite directions, so on its way up, the object is slowing down. On its way down, the velocity is negative. The acceleration is also negative. Velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, so the object is speeding up as it comes down. So whether it's on its way up or down, it's the same constant acceleration, the negative g, the entire time. So we can treat the up and then down as one part problem. Start here and end here. There is no need to treat the upward part and the downward part as two separate motions.